Hi everyone, I am filling in for uh, President Bernholtz today. So, uh, welcome to the February 14th, 2022 regular meeting of the San Francisco Elections Commission. This meeting is being held by teleconference pursuant to the governor's executive order N2920 and the 24th supplement to mayoral proclamation declaring the existence of a local emergency dated February 25th, 2020. Uh, Martha, can you please take the role and read the, the procedures for the meeting? Thank you, Madam Vice President. The minutes of this meeting will reflect that due to the COVID-19 health emergency and to protect commission members, city employees, and the public, the meeting rooms of City Hall are closed. However, commission members and staff will be participating in today's meeting remotely. This precaution is taken pursuant to the various local, state, and federal orders, declarations, and directives. Commission members will attend the meeting through WebEx video conference and participate in the meeting to the same extent as if they were physically present. Public comment will be available on each item on this agenda. Each member of the public will be allowed three minutes to speak. Comments or opportunities to speak during the public comment period are available via phone by calling 415-655-0001. Again, that number is 415-655-0001. Access code is 2487-204-7833. Again, 2487-204-7833. You will hear a beep when you are connected to the meeting. You will be automatically muted and in listening mode only. When your item of interest comes up, dial star three to raise your hand to be added to the public comment line. You will then hear you have raised your hand to ask a question. Please wait until the host calls on you. The line will be silent as you wait your turn to speak. Ensure you are in a quiet location before you speak. Uh, I'm sorry, before you speak, mute the sound of any equipment around you, including television, radio, or computer. It is especially important that you mute your computer if you are waiting via the web link, watching via the web link to prevent feedback and echo when you speak. When the system message says your line has been unmuted, this is your turn to speak. You are encouraged to state your name clearly. As soon as you begin speaking, you will have three minutes to provide your public comment. Six, if you have an interpreter on the line, six minutes. You will hear a bell go off when you have 30 seconds remaining. If you change your mind and wish to withdraw yourself from the public comment line, press star three again. You will hear the system say you have lowered your hand. When a phone is available, you can, well, I'm sorry, when a phone is not available, you can use your computer web browser. Make sure the participant's side panel is showing by clicking on the participant's icon. Please uh, make sure the participants panel is expanded in the side panel by pressing the small arrow indicator in the panel. You should see a list of panelists followed by a list of attendees. At the bottom of the list of attendees is a small button or icon that looks like a hand. Press the hand icon to raise your hand. The host will unmute you when it is time for you to comment. When you are done with your comment, click the hand icon again to lower your hand. Once your three minutes have expired, staff will thank you and mute you. You will hear your line has been muted. Public comment instructions are also listed on the last page of the agenda. Please, uh, public comment may also be submitted in writing. It will be shared with the commission after this meeting has concluded and will be included as part of the official meeting. Written comments should be sent to elections.commission at sfgov.org. Thank you, Madam Vice President. You're, you're muted, Becca, I'm sorry. Sorry, I will officially uh, call the meeting to order and Martha, can you please take roll? Sure. Vice President Chapel, Present. Commissioner Giordano? Here. Commissioner Mogi, Here. And Commissioner Dye? Here. Okay, with four commissioners, we meet quorum. Great. So I think first agenda item, the general public comment. Do we have any callers from the public? 
plenty of callers, but I don't. Oh, I do see one hand raised. I'm going to unmute you, caller. You have three minutes to comment. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can, Mr. Pelpel. Thank you. Why, yes, it is David Pelpel. Uh, I just wanted to publicly welcome a uh, new commissioner, uh, Di, and uh, if it's not too much to ask, maybe she could take a moment or two and introduce herself to uh, all of us and tell us about her wonderful background. Um, that's all I have on this item. Thanks very much. And we do have one other call. It's Dr. Jefferson. Uh, you are unmuted, Dr. Jefferson, and you have three minutes to comment. Uh, yes, thank you. Well, I, I, I want to know if this is the right time or uh, to, to make this comment. It's just an update about the um, uh, the Halderman report that we've discussed at the last two meetings, and I didn't know if you wanted that update now or uh, later in the uh, in the hearing. I think we're covering that at agenda item seven. I believe that's when we're talking about that report. So if you wouldn't mind waiting. No, I don't mind at all. That's what I wanted to make sure of. Okay. okay great. That's Thank all, you. That's so all much. for now. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, appears as though. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Um, Mr. Turner has his hand raised. Okay, Mr. Turner, you have three minutes to comment. I got to do this. I'm. Okay, great. <laughs> Mr. Turner, we can hear you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to raise my hand, and I was <laughs> waiting till the next agenda item. Thank you. <laughs> No, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think if it's if it's okay now, probably is an appropriate time for Commissioner Diane to give us a little bit of an introduction. Um, I'd be happy to. Thank you very much. Um, I'm excited to uh, be on this commission with you folks. I am. Uh, probably a democracy nerd, just like the rest of you, <laughs> if you're serving on this commission. Um, if you've heard of me before, it's probably because I spent 10 years on the very first uh, California Citizens Redistricting Commission. I concluded my service in uh, 2020, um, have spent the last um, several years um, trying to um, educate the public about gerrymandering and the electoral process and redistricting. I've also uh, done a lot of work with um, ranked choice voting advocates and uh, uh, those who are advocating for open primaries. And I also uh, ran an election for the city and county of San Francisco as a poll inspector back in 2012, where I discovered um, how very complicated it is to run an election. <laughs> so I have a great appreciation for Director Arnson and his job and all of uh, the, the dedicated people who formed the Department of Elections. So very pleased to be here. Um, in my uh, day job, I, I run my own strategy consulting firm and uh, work with a lot of uh, high tech startups, uh, as well as social enterprises. That's a little bit about me. Great. Thank you, Commissioner Dai. Just in the nick of time as well, you're joining us. <laughs> Glad to be part of your quorum. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so next agenda item, uh, discussion and possible action on resolution on continuation of remote election commission uh, meetings. And I think this will be our last remote meeting. I don't believe we've reread the resolution at the last couple of meetings. So uh, assuming we don't need to do that here as well, can I get a motion to uh, adopt that resolution? Commissioner okay. 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 Second, I move that we adopt the motion. Second, thank you. Okay, then public comment. Uh, I believe it's Mr. Pelpel. It is David Pelpel again. 
Um, so I have no objection to uh, the motion, and I think it's fine. Uh, I appreciate the 45th uh, supplement, which I was just reading through, which is complicated, and the mayor's office still has not posted the 45th supplement on their website. Um, anyway, um, I would suspect that there are a number of uh, practical and perhaps somewhat complicated issues about going back to in-person uh, meetings at City Hall and hybrid with public participation allowed, et cetera. So I'm sure that behind the scenes that'll get uh, worked through in the next uh, month. I'm happy to provide whatever uh, assistance I can uh, in that regard um, so that we're all safe and able to participate if that's the direction that the city and the mayor and the health officials are, are going in. Um, but I'd, I'd rather that we get it right and, and be safe uh, than rush into the thing. But whatever, whatever is so ordered will be so ordered. Um, anyway, uh, did I say enough? I think I did. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Mr. Papa. I don't see any other hands raised. Okay, then I think we can take a vote. Okay, Vice President Chapel. Yes. Commissioner Jadonic. Yes. Commissioner Mogi. Yes. And Commissioner Dai. Aye. Okay. Four in the affirmative, the motion passes. Great. Okay. Next agenda item Department of Elections budget proposals for fiscal years 22 to 23 and 23 to 24. Uh, we had our BOPEC meeting a couple of weeks ago where we went into uh, the documents that were provided in the packet uh, in a bit of detail with Director Arntz. Uh, I think, Commissioner Jordanik, do you want to give any thoughts or comments from that meeting? Um, sure. So we had a, a really good discussion. Um, all of us had a number of questions that we talked about with Director Ernst. And um, one of the things we talked about was the increased poll worker stipend. And we also talked about one of the questions I had was around the um, Dominion contract. And, um, but yeah, we didn't take any vote or anything, but um, it was a good discussion. Yeah, and I'll just supplement by saying we, we dug in a little bit about the budgeting around the special elections. Um, and it sounds like we're kind of covered from a budget perspective on, on what's anticipated to date. Um, so that's not causing any identified challenges. Um, so that was helpful. Um, any comments from the commission based on that hasn't, that wasn't on BOPEC or, or Director Arnes? Yeah, so I had um, a couple things to ask about. Number one, um, Dr. Turns, did you have any updates? Because I know the versions are, that are posted are revised. Right. So, yes, Commissioner Jordanik. So, the, um, we did add, for the poor worker stipend, we added the next fiscal year. Uh, so, instead of waiting for the second fiscal year to potentially initiate an increase to the poor worker stipend, uh, we added the next fiscal year uh, for the start of the poll worker stipend increase. Uh, we haven't resolved yet the, the tax impl impl implications of the stipends for this calendar year, but we still wanted to give the poll workers potentially an increase in pay uh, for uh, for November. Uh, also, the, the sheet counters that were in the original memo for around $22,000, that's been removed. We couldn't find sheet counters that we uh, wanted to purchase. And also, there's one less health service election uh, for around seventy seventy five thousand dollars in the memo, and also in our in our forms than the information that BOPEC reviewed. Then also on uh, Commissioner Jordanke requested a, the table, which is now on page six, to have some extra rows in relation to the approving not approving the Dominion contract and when. Uh, the, the bid processes, negotiations, and implementation timeframes would occur. So that those are the changes, the big, the big changes, I guess. 
um, in the in the memo and also in the forms in relation to what BOPEC reviewed a couple of weeks ago. Okay, yeah, thanks for the, the changes you made, um, especially the table that I had requested. But I did have a few, um, wanted to get a little more clarity on the Dominion contract, just because I was thinking about it a little bit more. Um, do you know like about when you'll be introducing that resolution to the board? Like approximately what month do you think? Uh, no, at the top of my head, I, I don't because I want to fold it into the, the budget hearings, ideally. Uh, so I, I don't, I guess maybe April, May, somewhere in there. Okay. <clears throat> and then, um, just to kind of be clear, is there any reason we can't like renew it one year this year and then next year we could renew the second year? Is there any like downside to doing that? Well, it's just, it's just the timing of it. Uh, so if we so if we re renew it this year for one year, essentially we're, we're renewing for 20, 2023 to, to 2024. So that means that, you gonna say something? No. So that means that after we come out of the, 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 the presidential primary in, in March of 2024, we're going into the presidential election in November, we'd also have to be implementing a voting system. And so, ideally, I like to get past the presidential election if we're going to bring a new system into San Francisco. What well, what I mean is, um, is there any reason that the second year can't be renewed next year? I mean, it could, it could. It, it, I mean, for planning purposes, it's it's nicer to have you know more time than than not. Then also in 2025, there are no scheduled elections in San Francisco. So that that's a, a better time frame to to bring in a system to you know do the bidding process, get the contract done, and then bring a system in. Okay, and then lastly, um, if I know during the committee meeting you had said that you wanted to request two years in the resolution that you were going to be drafting for the board, and then if and then you said it was sort of up to the board if they wanted to change it. Does that mean that the committee members would have to like request an amendment? From two years to one year, if they wanted to, I could even I could we could even draft the resolution so where it's a one year or two year choice that the that the board makes. I mean that's easily done. Oh, that would be helpful. Yeah, because I I I do think that given everything that's been happening around open source voting with the pilot, and then a lot of the information about Dominion, you know, regarding the, you know the security report that's coming out of Georgia that we don't really know much about. And also um, the fact that we still only have one vendor that's available to San Francisco. I think if we postpone renewing it until for the second year until next year, I think we'd be incentivizing new vendors to come forward and it would just give us more options. But, um, but yeah, okay, um, that's all I had, thank you. And then just if I can, so so the so the 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 numbers in the memo are changed, but also the numbers in the forms themselves have changed to reflect the the changes I just mentioned about the poll worker stipend, uh, which is one hundred eighty six thousand dollars being added to the next fiscal year, and about twenty two thousand dollars being removed for the the sheet counter, and about I think it's seventy five being removed for the health service election. So just so you know. That's helpful. Any other questions or comments for Director Arntz or Director Arntz, anything else you want to add? No, that's that's it. Thank you. Can I ask a question? So I know Bopik, thank you so much for everyone for meeting um ahead of time and you know reviewing the budget. Did you come I just heard that there was a discussion, but I wasn't sure if there was um a recommendation made or did you not make one? We, we didn't. Did. Have, we didn't make a. There was no resolution or or action taken at the meeting. I think in general, and and Commissioner Jordanic, let me know if you disagree. It seemed like based on our discussion, the the budget seemed appropriate, seemed thoughtful. I don't think we raised any significant issues other than kind of the discussion about the Dominion contract that 
we've continued here. So I think in general, you know, my takeaway was that the recommendation is that we would approve the budget. Director Arms, I have a question, and I know I'm Johnny come lately, so I, I don't want to disrupt anything, but just um, as someone who has, you know, been a poll inspector in the past, I'm kind of curious. I, you know, totally agree with increasing the the poll worker stipend, especially in the face of um, difficulty recruiting new poll workers. I'm curious, have um, the number of poll workers been reduced? Um, at any of the um, polling locations or the number of polling locations if they've been consolidated all given the um, kind of the massive switch to vote by mail? In this budget? Um, and just in operationally in general. Uh, in the budget, uh, the, the number of polling places has not changed, although might change after redistricting occurs. Uh, but we still we're projecting around four poll workers per polling place in the past. We, we projected five okay. uh, as an average number. Uh, operationally, we have less polling places for this February election because we can consolidate under state law by the nature of the, of the types of elections we're conducting tomorrow. And then also, if, if, if there's April uh, general election for AD17, we can also consolidate the number of, of polling places. So. There'd be less polling places for for this election than also potentially for April, but also we've we've uh, reduced the number of, of re recruited poll workers for February potentially April down to three point five or so, uh, and then for for June we'll go back up to four and we'll have a full complement of polling places. Okay, yeah, that's helpful. It's just uh, I know that my personal behavior as a voter has changed. Yeah. And, you know, I strolled by my polling place and it was, you know, like crickets there. So, <laughs> yeah. so I support, you know, increasing the pay for the people who are working, but it doesn't seem like we need as many. So that, that sounds consistent with what you're doing. So thank you. Um, and I, I just want to clarify um, Viva's um, question. Um, at the BOPEC meeting, um, we were not, or they were not required to um, make a decision or a resolution. Um, the meetings, uh, that meeting and this meeting are for the public's input um, regarding the agency's budget. Um, so there's no, you know, it's just basically so that the public can come together and and give their opinion. So thank you. Right. So we actually don't even have to. Do we? Is today the deadline? Is I thought that was why we're meeting today, and or today's the deadline. For the public engagement process. Yes, we were required to have two public meetings. So this is the second public meeting. Okay. So there isn't any decision that needs to be made today. I think so, actually, because we have to submit this uh, next week to the controller's office. We have to input this budget into the system. So we are taking an action today. Yes. Got it. So this is our last meeting. Yes. Plus, we're taking an action today. Got it. So and right? Just, Did I say that right? Yes. Okay. Just want to make sure we're doing the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. Press <laughs> you are. Commissioner Jordanic, did you have a, a comment? I just wanted to clarify. So we do we do need to, like, you recommend the budget today as for approval. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So then I guess at this point, uh, unless there's any other comments or questions, I think, uh, do we have a motion regarding the budget? Um, I can make the motion to, uh, uh, to approve or, yeah, I think it's at this point, we're just gonna approve, so. Yes, it would be the final approval of the agency's proposed budget. Yeah, what did you say? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I approve, um, I make a motion to approve the um, Department of Elections uh, fiscal years 2022-23 and 23-24 um, budget proposal. Great, thank you. Uh, do we have a second? I'll second. Wonderful. Okay, now moving on to public comment. I will go ahead and unmute the first caller. Caller, you are unmuted. 
David Pilpel, I support the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pilpel. And Mr. Turner, you are unmuted. Uh, good afternoon, uh, commissioners, and good afternoon to our newest commissioner. Thank you for your public service. Uh, just wanted to mention a few things because I'm a little bit confused, but that's okay. Uh, the, as far as this motion goes, um, is there the opportunity to make sure that the public is represented to the extent that we are not renewing the Dominion contract prematurely, that we're not exercising that second year option? Because in the public's opinion, there's a great disconnect between the conversation going on here and sort of akin to that uh, movie that's come out lately called Don't Don't Look Up. I don't know if anybody saw that, but the the public believes it's imperative to expedite the open source systems and to phase out the Dominion proprietary intellectual property systems. So when we talk loosely about, well, we'll just it's more convenient for us to do it a little bit later so that we can get you know, uh, ourselves in order before the 2024 election presidential, what we're trying to do is get the systems that are causing the, the unrest out and bring in modern technology systems that may quell the civil unrest that we're seeing around elections right now. So that's the idea and what we have at stake here is it's not just talking about San Francisco County, we're attempting to set precedent right now within the state of California, which will hopefully set precedent for the rest of the United States. So th these aren't casual decisions about the timing. So we are very much hoping that we send a message to Dominion and Steve Bennett, who refuses to come, my understanding in front of this commission, um, when he calls the operation at City Hall a, a well-oiled machine and that he's in control of it and that the this commission doesn't know anything about elections and that the people of San Francisco don't care about elections. We, we don't want to send a message to that type of operation that that's okay it, because it's not okay. So we want Dominion out of our county as, and it's just not them, it's people that are selling these insecure software systems. Regardless of the Georgia report, we know that the science tells us Dominion can never be brought up to a satisfactory level for security, whereas these open source systems meet the standard that we're looking for in the new world of technology. So we are poised to do great work here. We, we would appreciate it if, if uh, Director Arts would pay strict attention to the conversations that are occurring and not push the board toward exercising that second year option prematurely. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have another caller. Caller, you are unmuted and you have three minutes to comment. Yes, this is Greg Pennington from San Francisco. And I was a, a volunteer for the California Clean Money Campaign. I circulated petitions at many San Francisco events. And I can tell you that the support for open source voting was overwhelming. There wasn't a single person that didn't want to sign the petition in support of it. The 2024 election is a critical election. We have got to get open source voting in place as quickly as possible. I ask you to please only renew one year on the Dominion contracts to allow the possibility that the open source would be ready in time for the critical 2024 election. And then if it turns out open source wouldn't be ready in time, then you could exercise the option for the second year of, on Dominion. But I'm telling you, as a grassroots activist, the people of San Francisco very strongly support open source voting. Please help make it happen as soon as possible. And please only renew Dominion for one year at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pennington. Uh, there's another caller. Caller, you are unmuted. You have three minutes to comment. Good afternoon. This is Jim Soper from the National Voting Rights Task Force. First of all, I would like to welcome Commissioner Dye to the commission. 
I've been coming to these meetings since 2005, and I'm I'm delighted to see that the commission is getting stronger over the years. I think that the commission would be wise and the department would be wise to extend Dominion's contract by just one year because, for example, one, we have not seen the Holderman report yet. And everything I've seen so far about it is it's not good. And that's a report about Dominion. Uh, secondly, the Bay Area Urban Strategic Area Initiative should be issuing a report within half a year, uh, a general survey of what's needed in the Bay Area for uh, security. Uh, we haven't seen that yet. The open source project should have a pilot going hopefully in November. And we need to see what happens with that pilot before we start committing to contracts with other, uh, other vendors. And finally, uh, yeah, the Dominion representative has been invited to appear for the commission, and he hasn't shown up yet. And I think somehow the commission needs to send a signal that he needs to communicate with the commission and not just the director to answer some questions that are somewhat unsettling. So we have a lot of things coming in, a lot of information coming in this year, and I would encourage that we not commit to a two-year contract unless it's necessary. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sofer. And we have one more caller. Caller, you are unmuted. You have three minutes to comment. Uh, hello, good afternoon, commissioners, and a big uh, welcome to Commissioner uh, Dye. Um, I'm Trent Lang, president of the California Clean Money Campaign, a nonpartisan nonprofit organization focused on fair elections. Um, we work very closely with Board of Supervisors President Shimon Walton on his legislation for a pilot program uh, for the open source uh, voting system this November, along with Commissioner Jadonic and others. Uh, we delivered over 2,000 signatures from San Francisco residents uh, who support open source voting to Mayor Breed, and uh, 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 nearly 11,000 signatures from across the country asking Mayor Breed to sign the legislation so the pilot could go forward this November. Um, so we were very excited that the Board of Supervisors unanimously passed the legislation, uh, and of course the uh, uh, Election Commission uh, uh, supported it, and Mayor Breed signed uh, uh, President Walton's pilot legislation. As our petition said, it will help lead the nation to more transparent, accurate, and less costly elections. Um, this exciting development, I think, is why, and other speakers have spoken to this, is why uh, uh, we need to uh, uh, ask that the Dominion contract be only renewed for one year, uh, not two, because we'd like San Francisco to have the opportunity to use the new open source voting system uh, in the presidential election if it's proven in the pilot project and certified in time. There have been literally years and years of work by this commission, by supervisors, by uh, 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 open source advocates, and everybody else in the legislature, even uh, um, with uh, City Attorney uh, Chu, then Assembly Member Chu, and uh, Senator Weiner. Now we're finally about to make a major step forward and potentially have a certified system ready in time for the 2024 election. It would be a travesty. It'd be an absolute travesty for this Department of Elections to ask the Board of Supervisors to do a two-year uh, renewal if there's, uh, unless it's absolutely necessary and therefore below the opportunity to have uh, the open source system, if it's ready, if it's ready uh, uh, for the 2024 presidential election. We've been working on this all for years. Um, uh, Please, I don't know if you need to uh, make a caveat to your current budget resolution uh, or, or something of that nature to show that the commission would like to ask the supervisors for a one year renewal. Um, I would like you to, uh, hopefully you could consider that given all the work that you've done to get us uh, to, this, to this place. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we have um, Alec Bash, Mr. Bash, you are unmuted. You have three minutes to comment. Thank you very much. I'm Alec Bash. I worked for the city for 30 years at the planning department, but have 
work on national political issues for 20 years after that. And first, I want to commend Commissioner Dai for her work on the California Redistricting Commission and her uh, appearance now on the San Francisco Elections Commission, which is wonderful to have that statewide representation here. Uh, and it is something that we would hope would at some point be extended to the rest of the country. I'm getting incredible backfeed on everything I, I say, so I hope that it's coming across more clearer as you uh, are hearing me speak. I'm here to speak about the one year extension of the contract rather than two years, because I think it is very important now that we have a pilot program underway for the election this year, it would make total sense to have the results of that program before we commit to a two-year program, to the second year of the program, for many of the same reasons that other people have said. If there is an opportunity to go towards open source, something that I and many others have been working on for about 15 years in the city, it would be very helpful to be able to proceed with that once we know that we do once we have a viable solution for that. So I just want to offer those thoughts to you and urge you to go with the option for a one-year extension of the contract with the opportunity to review and extend for a second year if that's deemed appropriate and following the results of the pilot program. We I do understand that the pilot program does not mean that that would be a party selected by the city, but I think that the results of that program would be would help inform the city as to whether it is feasible to go towards the in an open source direction. Thank you very much for the opportunity to comment. Thank you. There's another caller at the end of the list, but I can't tell if this person has already um, given a comment. I'm going to unmute them. Oh, okay, their hand went down. Okay, so we have no other callers. Great, thank you, Martha. Thank you. I think for the clarification of, of the commission, we did address how the, um, in our BOFEC meeting, we addressed how the Dominion contract extension would flow into the budget. And my understanding is that the budget is not the way that we are approving one year versus two years on the extension that happens separate from the budget. And that the budget that's been proposed is dynamic based on that decision and kind of contemplates either scenario. But Director Arntz or, or Commissioner Javonic, let me know if I've mischaracterized our discussion from the BOPEC meeting. Um, well, I know it's it's discussed in the memo, but yeah, Director Arntz, can you confirm that the budget as it's currently drafted does not go either way on that decision, doesn't commit to either direction on that? The So the $2.1 million in the, for the contract amount is, is inputted automatically into the budget for the department. And so, so yes, it, the, the, the budget does include $2.1 million for both years of the, op, of the available options. It's not something the department inputs, it's something that the, the mayor's office for the city might even be the controller's office Inputs because that's the potential length because six years, seven years was the six years of the potential length of the contract. So for budgeting for forecasting purposes, the controller's office inputs the entire potential length of the contract into the budget system. But if the board were to approve a one year contract, actually the board 2.1 would probably carry forward to next year unless the board were to not approve the second option and then that money would be would potentially be pulled out of the, the department's budget for Dominion, but then new money would have to come in for a new system. But so the 2.1, yes, it's in our budget. It's something that's part of our budget. It's not something that we input. If the board were to not approve both one-year options, then the money would come out in relation to Dominion, but then more money would come in in relation to the next system that the city uses. Okay, but I mean, in terms of the resolution that the department presents to the board, it doesn't say you have to request two years or you have to request one year, right? It's just, is it silent on that point? 
for the approval of the options? Um, well, for the resolution that you're going to be submitting in April or May, asking the board to renew the contract. Right. That wording is the wording on that resolution locked down within the budget as. Because you said earlier that you could make it as a question as 1 or 2 to the board. Right? So the resolution is separate in relation to the, the budget. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's, that's what I want to confirm. Thanks. And in fact, any open source system would likely be less than the 2.1 million. So. You know, if the budgets, you know, allocate, you don't have to use it on that. Presumably it's, it's just uh, allowing for the money for planning purposes. And, and I think to clarify for um, all of the, the folks who took the time to comment, it sounds like the appropriate venue for this um, would be to express your uh, opinions at a board of at, at a board meeting when this resolution comes up for discussion and a vote i, th I think dca flores stop me if i'm wrong if we do want to talk about the dominion contract extension i think we'll have to add that as an agenda item for a future meeting Yeah, so this, so this um, action item um, is for um, the budget proposal. Um, so I would imagine that if, um, because the attachments are the budget memo and the forms. So if you wanted to discuss the Dominion contract separately, um, I would imagine that it would have to be recalendered to another date. Um, because they're, the public has no way how the um, agenda is worded now, the public has no way of knowing that the Dominion contract would be discussed and an, and a separate um, a separate um, kind of like motion would be made regarding the Dominion contract. This only discusses the budget proposal. And so the budget proposal as a whole is what you should um, be discussing and making um, a decision on today. Got it. So I think member of pub the members of the public, your comments are heard. I think we should plan to address those at a future meeting with a set agenda point. Are there any concerns with the commission now for how that Dominion contract impacts the budget? Or do we feel comfortable taking a vote now? Okay. Well, comfortable. I think it's it's basically a placeholder. It sounds like the resolution that um, Director Arntz would prepare uh, with the commission's input can be discussed at a future meeting. Great. Okay. Uh, Secretary Delgadillo, can you take a vote? Yes. Sure. Vice President Chapel. Yes. Commissioner Jordanic. Yes. Commissioner Mulgi. Yes. And Commissioner Dye. Aye. Okay, with four in the affirmative, it passes. Great, thank you everyone. Moving on to the next agenda item, we have approval of minutes of previous meetings. Uh, these are discussion and possible action on the commission's draft minutes of January 19th, 2021 and November 20th, 2019 regular meeting minutes. Do I have a motion? So move. Thank you. A second. A second. Thank you. Okay. Public comment. I will unmute the first caller. You're unmuted. You have two minutes. Thank you, David Pilpel again. Um, so, a couple of uh, issues here. Uh, I believe it's. Um, just a, a, an oversight, but the January minutes on both the agenda and on the website refer to January 19th of 2021. The minutes are correct in 2022. Um, it's either a, a legal or policy issue as to whether you want to take action today or out of an abundance of caution, put it off for a month. I don't think it's going to matter in the grand scheme of things. Um, and I'm not sure that I had any 
substantive uh, concerns about um, how they read on the 2019 uh, minutes, which apparently took some time to uh, sort out um, with the transition of commission secretary and all that. I was not at uh, that meeting. I did notice uh, at least a couple of uh, things that ought to get fixed under on page one item three member to two of the open source voting technical advisory committee. I believe that's Rowan Katu, and I believe his last name is not uh, spelled uh, correctly. Um, it is K A T T O U W. Um, and perhaps giving his first name would be useful for the uh, record. I always think that the first reference to a person should have their full name. Uh, and then the only other substantive thing was on page three, item five under the director's report. I, I suspect that Director Arntz reported expecting to certify the November 5th, 2019 election, the week of November 25th, 2019. Um, I may have some other uh, stylistic suggestions that I'm happy to convey to Secretary Del Cadillo if you approve uh, today um, on the rest of this. I think the, it appears that there was a closed session and the closed session doesn't indicate what time it started and ended and who was present in closed session and that could probably be cleaned up as well. Anyway, um, as I say, I'm happy to communicate um, all of that to Secretary Delgadio um, offline, but thanks to her presumably for uh, going through the effort to reconstruct this from uh, more than two years ago. Um, hope those comments are helpful. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Mr. Popel. I think those are all very helpful comments. They sound more typographical in nature, unless someone disagrees. Are we okay approving them with the motion and is subject to those changes? I have a, uh, are there any other public comments before I say anything? Don't believe so. Well, no, okay. I don't see any other hands raised. Yeah, I, I actually didn't even realize until, um, the last gentleman spoke that this was actually for 2019. So when when I looked at the um, the November the 2019 minutes, a question I had, which may be correct, uh, for item three, um, it the topic says open source voting, but then on the first paragraph on the next page it says that Director Garuli gave an update on rank choice voting pilot project was that open source or was that a rank choice voting unfortunately predates me yeah I, so <laughs> uh commissioner jordanic yeah that, that could probably be clarified but if my memory serves there was a um and direct turns could speak to this but there was a a pilot rank choice voting risk limiting audit that was using open source software. Is that correct, Director Correct. So, I mean, we could clarify that. that could be. Okay, and then uh, just a couple of stylistics things. Probably should mention Congress member Nancy Pelosi. So I think the normal way that we refer, gender neutral, and then. She would be speaker. This was, yeah, 2019. Um, DCA floors, are these, I just wanted to make sure, are these enough comments that we should be looking at these and then approving them in a kind of corrected form or? Yeah, I think that um, it, it becomes difficult. I mean, Martha was looking, was hearing a recording from two years ago, not being there herself. So it, um, it's pretty difficult to redo that when you're not there present. Um, so I think that it has become more than a uh, typographical. So I, I would, my suggestion is that anyone that has edits to the minutes, um, including the ones that were given by Mr. Pilpel earlier, that we redo these minutes and come back at the next meeting ready to approve them. Okay. So do we withdraw the motion? You would just, yes, you would withdraw the motion. Um, you take a vote to withdraw the motion and then the motion is withdrawn. 
Okay. Uh, so I guess, Martha, can you take a vote to withdraw the motion? Sure. Are we withdrawing the motion for both of the meeting minutes? I, I believe it's just for the um, November 2019 meet, uh, minutes. Um, the other minutes, I think, were, were just strictly. I think it was strictly date. So, should we vote on that one first? Since yes. Since taking public comment and then. Actually, um, withdraw the motion um, completely. And this is why uh, maybe a consideration for the commission is um, before taking public comment, um, don't make a motion <laughs> um, so that you don't have to redo it once public comment happens. That's just a, a policy um, decision that you should make, but it's my um, recommendation that just hear public comment first and then make a motion and then, uh, you know, you can vote. Um, it, there's no, there's no requirement in the Brown Act that we make a motion and then take public comment. Okay, noted. Okay, so, uh, Commissioner Mogi, I think you would you'll have to withdraw your motion. Okay, I'll withdraw my motion. Okay, and then we vote on that. You need a second. A second, this one. Commissioner, just a point of order. Is it necessary to actually? vote on withdrawing the motion if the person who put the motion forward voluntarily withdraws it? It's a good question. Anna? <laughs> it's, it's a, it is a Robert's Rules of Order kind of question, but it doesn't hurt to, to do this process just in case we should have done it. Um, I, I don't know it off the top of my head personally, but um, it doesn't hurt to uh, make a motion to withdraw so that you can start clean. Okay. I, I second the motion. I was muted when I raised my hand. Thank you. Okay, and I'm assuming we don't have to take public comment to vote on the withdrawal. Great. Okay. No. Martha, we do not have to take. Can you can you comment for the okay? Yeah. No, because you essentially just took public comment on this on this agenda item. Um, you're just withdrawing that motion. Okay. You. So, Vice President Chapel, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Giordano, Commissioner Giordani, how do you vote? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Mogi? Yes. And Commissioner Dai? Aye. Okay, with four in the affirmative, the motion passes. Okay. Then, in deference to DCA Flores's comment, let's take public comment because I see a hand before we do anything else. Okay. Oh, you're unmuted. Sorry, it's uh, David Bell again. I guess I was confused about where we are procedurally. I think in terms of Robert's rules, you probably didn't need to vote on. I think a member can withdraw a motion that's made and it doesn't require whatever. Anyway, um, if that was on the 2019 minutes, then I would still suggest that the January minutes have the uh, incongruity, for lack of a better word, uh, on the agenda and the minutes that one says 2021, the other says 2022. So my suggestion is just put off both sets. Uh, it will be cleaned up by the elves that work at night to do these things, and we'll be properly back before you uh, uh, next month. That's my thought. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Mr. Popo. Uh, I think that makes sense, unless anyone objects that we can push them to the next meeting. Sounds like a plan. Okay, so we are not taking any action on that agenda item. So then moving on to item number six, open source voting, discussion and possible action on open source voting, including the pilot submission process. Um, Director Arns, do you want to give any kind of initial comments on on the document that's been provided in the packet, the submitted plan in the attachments? Sure. So uh, last Monday and the seventh, I submitted the uh, documentation. Secretary of State's office 
applying for a pilot program in San Francisco uh, with using ballot marking devices from uh, Voting Works uh, and the Secretary of State's office for the November uh, 2022 uh, election and the Secretary of State's office indicated that they received the application and they'll review it and uh, get back to me with any questions. And so that's where things stand right now. Great. Uh, any questions or comments from the commission? Um, yeah, just again, Director Ernst, I think what you submitted looks excellent. Thank you for all the work yep. you did on that. I know it's um, looks like a real big job um, to put that together. Um, my one question is, can you, um, I know we, we were had the draft as part of the last agenda pack. I was wondering if you could maybe comment on anything that was different in the draft, or maybe there wasn't anything substantive. Uh, so as far as the, uh, the, I guess the body of the application. There is an extra section. I, I did fix some language here, but there's an, also an added section about requesting to use man, a full manual tallies of the ballots used rather than trying to implement risk limit auditing just because the, the number of ballots involved probably won't really register for a risk limiting auditing uh, scope. Then, um, also added to the application is the Secretary of State's office, I think about a, two weeks before the deadline, I can't remember, uh, sent another form that Voting Works had to complete, which is attachment nine, uh, the application for approval of voting for a, a voting system. So they so Voting Works had to itself submit an application on its system to Secretary of State's office for review and approval in relation to a pilot program occurring in this November's election. So that, I guess those are, those are the two substantive changes to the application from what you saw in January. Okay, thank you. Director Arntz, I have a question and, and um, this is very helpful. Thank you for providing it. I guess just taking a step back to you in the department, what does success look like with respect to the pilot program and how is that kind of being evaluated and and defined at the end of the day once once this pilot plan has been executed i don't know i i mean essentially we would i mean my instant answer is we would expect the system to work with the components and to work as expected to conduct an election for people using those ballot marking devices then when those ballots are scanned for the for the results to be scanned and reported correctly, I mean that's so the the scope of the pilot program is two ballot marking devices in the city hall voting center, then a a, a ballot scanner in our computer room, so there's a small number of, of items. So basically that the that the components operate and that the system can can uh, can uh, scan and report uh, the results appropriately. Makes sense. Is there going to be so there's kind of the voter experience, which it sounds like we expect to be similar to the standard uh, Dominion systems, uh, and then there's an election, you know, administration kind of experience as well. So I guess the uh, kind of as a follow up to. Uh, Vice President Chappell's question, you know, what, what would you want to see from kind of an elections administration piece that you're kind of running two systems in parallel, you're checking for accuracy, but is there kind of easy use features or other things that the Department of Elections is going to be looking for? This is, uh, I mean, as far as usability, that's the voters would give us that feedback. So. That's not something that we would, like, I don't think, judge. I mean, we're we're looking for the system to operate the way it's expected. I mean, that would be our, you know, our perspective on the pilot program. So, um, so I mean, if if the system, if voters 
have frustrations using the system or if the I'm just, I mean, I'm not trying to anyway cast aspersions on the system, just or if the if the scanners didn't scan, they got jammed a lot. I mean, whatever. I mean, those are the that's what would catch our attention on on this pilot program, and then of course getting any feedback from the voters on the, on their experience. Is there a um, is there a way to collect that feedback? Uh, we can provide uh, forms to the voters if they want to complete forms uh, indicating their experience with the system, sure. It seems like in, in order to capture that data, we have to ask the question, so. Yeah, we're, we're kind of a long way from that point yet. So uh, I think as we go through the application process with the state, uh, one of the, the criteria is that we have to indicate any sort of issues with the system. So that's something we have to collect on the department side, um, and I'm sure that on the voter side, uh, both voting works, especially voting works, want to get you know feedback from, from from the voters that we could collect as well. But yeah, I don't know what the steps are between now and, and when all that would happen. Though we're still waiting on the state to give us some feedback on the application. Okay. Thanks. Okay. This should we take comments from members of the public at this point, unless there's any other comments from the commission. Okay. Let's move on to comments from the members of the public. Okay. Uh, Mr. Turner, I, you are being unmuted. You have 3 minutes to comment. Uh, hello again, commissioners. Uh, I guess at this point. We just want to make comment that uh, the great work of this uh, elections commission is again appreciated. I think for uh, the sake of the new commissioner, we should state that this work initially started uh, with a fellow by the name of Alan Deckert in the year 2000 coming out of Sacramento and resulted in a demonstration of an open source system in 2004 that was covered by the New York Times. So you can imagine the, the, the time lag that's felt by the pioneers of this work. Uh, it's been, you know, uh, over 20 years now that the answer has remained the same. Um, if we want to increase voter confidence and make sure that, as uh, Director Arndt said, the ballots are being scanned and uh, recorded correctly. The only way we can do that is with these open source systems. The current systems are not capable of that. And that is just the unfortunate reality. It's nobody's fault that we've been sold overpriced systems that don't work for the, for the uh, act intended. It, that's just what happened. We're all doing the best we can with what we've been dealt. But now that luckily voting works has shown up, um, we're not in that position where we're trying to convince the government to build the system out, which is the predicament we were in previously. So, lo and behold, now we have a system that is, is, that is available. And it's not like this is the first time it's going to be used. I'm sure everybody's aware it's already conducting elections in Mississippi. So, even though now we've got the extra issue of ranked choice voting, um, my understanding is this is not rocket science for these open source pioneers and that this mission is simply accomplished. It's just a matter of political will. It hasn't been the fact that we can't do it or the technology isn't there. It's really been the politics that have stood in the way. And of course, I'm sure everybody's aware that Microsoft and these vendors, they hold the big hammer within the political arena. So this is tremendous work again that you're doing. I think we have Kismet in San Francisco where, where we started this effort so many years ago with Tom Aniano and folks like that leading the way that now we have a progressive secretary of state, a forward thinking secretary of state and uh, the president of our board in San Francisco and you election commissioners and all the supervisors all on the same page at the same time 
which is fantastic. So as long as we're brave and hold the line and don't backslide and don't allow the vendors to come in and manipulate the environment, however they might do it. And believe me, if they can, they will, because their goal is to hold the line in San Francisco and not allow this to move forward by hook or by crook. And I think if you see the statements of Steve Bennett, you'll realize what you're dealing with here. So you have your work cut out for you. And again, the public applauds your efforts. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Turner. I don't see any other comments. Do you, Martha? No. Okay. No, I do not. No uh, other hands raised. Okay. Do we have any action to be taken here? I'm, I, I haven't heard one in our discussion, but. I don't think there is, but may I just quickly. Um, Make a quick comment, um, Director Arns. I just wanted to say thank you for. I know that you know there's there were, um, it was a team effort, but I really appreciate the application to be submitted. I know that it's a really busy time of the year, um, and I and you continue to kind of you know meet our elections policy on top of making sure uh, we have like back to back elections and back actually, um, happening. And so I appreciate it, and I'm looking forward to things. You know, continue to move on as we heard from the public commenter, like, I do honestly believe that it does take. Um, for these type of efforts to happen, it just is sometimes. The political will and also from, you know, the department as well. Um, and I know oftentimes that there was some will. Um, politically, but not a full support and I, and I do agree that, you know, I think this is the right timing for everything to happen. So. Um, I'm really looking forward to the next steps and I know that we have a lot more to go, um, but I think this is the right step forward. So, thank you. And just to add on to that, um, I, I think it took three tries for the um, independent redistricting to pass in California. So, the, the timeline of decades is, is not unknown <laughs> for innovations in our electoral process. And Director Arndt's uh, funny story is that um, I was first exposed to ranked choice voting as a college student at UC Berkeley, where we used uh, um, preferential proportional voting, which is a little more complex form than than, sacri uh, than, than we use here in the city. And in fact, um, an algorithm was written to automatically count the votes and do the ranked choices and uh, and a bug was found because it was open source, you know, written by students <laughs> in the in the computer science department. And as a result, all the candidates insisted that the votes be counted manually. And so all the candidates would go into the AOC chamber and watch these votes be transferred manually in piles <laughs> all night <laughs> until the vote was completed. And that was what was necessary for people to feel that the elections were transparent and the candidates were confident that the vote was right. And I think we're um, a little more sophisticated than that, but uh, I think that, you know, getting there might be a little painful, but I think will result in a lot better transparency for our elections. Okay, thank you. If there's no further comments, I will move on to the next agenda point. Okay. Item 7 commissioners reports discussion and possible action on commissioners reports on topics not covered by another item on this agenda meetings with public officials oversight and observation activities long range planning for commission activities and areas of study proposed legislation which affects elections. There are a number of attachments in the packet. So, I will open up for for discussion on the commission. Mogi. Thank you. I saw the letter. Um, I just want to provide a quick update. I actually, um, I really appreciated uh, President Bernholt sending in the letter and I also heard um, directly from the district attorney. Um, he actually reached out to me personally to thank for my service um, and he is actively looking for someone to come on board actually ASAP. Um, 
he has a couple of folks in mind, but I think they're just going through the the vetting process at this time. And so hopefully, um, you know, there won't be any kind of like there there won't um be any delays in terms of my appointment, but I'll follow up with him um, you know, after as well, um, to let him know that, you know, um it's about a month from now that we would have our next meeting and we would really appreciate someone to come on board. And so um, you know, it's Commissioner Dai, welcome. Um, I know that um, it's we're literally switching off. I'm, I'm going to be stepping off as as you step on. I'm really excited. I think that this has just been, you know, a really great commission. I've shared this with others as well. Um, that, you know, I think that we've we've learned to like have very efficient meetings um, and also being having very, uh, you know, active body that's very engaged and being very mindful of each other's uh, personal time as well to make sure that we don't, um, you know, really push for very, very long meetings unless they're they're needed. Um, I think it it is a lot of credit goes to the department, um, you know, Director Arns for running such a great department and, you know, we don't really have to have to like get too much in the weeds of everything. And so I think this has just been such a great opportunity to work um, to to serve on, and so I just want to say a quick thank you, and then um, welcome, and also um, that hopefully there will be um, a replacement for me or my the new um, appointment coming very soon. Thank you, Commissioner Mogi, for that update. That's helpful. That's uh, making me hopeful that we won't be uh, down to four people for the next one. It'll be great. And thank you, sincere thank you for your years of service to the commission. Uh, I, I, I got to watch you as president when I first joined and it was uh, very illuminating, especially now that I find myself struggling through today. So thank you. <laughs> um, doing great, you're doing great. <laughs> you should see my first meeting, so. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Commissioner Jordanic. Yeah, I also want to say, you know, thank you again, Commissioner Mogi. It's been a really pleasure serving with you. And good luck to whatever you're off to. And um, I guess this is kind of the second time we're saying goodbye because we last last month too. And then welcome, Commissioner Dai. Excited to really have you on board. You're very um, have a lot of expertise, and I think we're really going to benefit a lot from you. Um, in terms of the commissioner's reports, I wanted to just draw attention to the um, the documents under the Halderman report section. There were three documents they added um, just in the past couple of days that were forwarded to me. Um, that I guess you can kind of look them over, but I wanted to say that I think David Jefferson is um, going to be speaking during public comments so he can kind of give an update because it's a little bit technical what's been going on. And then I also wanted to ask, um, I haven't personally spoken with President Bernholtz, but does anyone know if she received a reply from Mr. Bennett? I, I haven't heard, unless Secretary Delvedio, you received an update. Yeah, no, I didn't get any update and, and uh, she was aware that, you know, that this would come up, but still no update, no response. Okay. And I also want to mention, um, maybe Commissioner Dye is being modest, but in addition to this letter of appointment in the packet, I know that um, City Attorney Chu also issued a press release about her. So I encourage you to go to the um, City Attorney's website and check that out. It's under the news section. So, and there's a nice picture as well. Yeah, I didn't realize there was going to be all this pomp and circumstance, but I appreciated it. <laughs> It shows you how, how grateful we are to have you joining us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I sat in for your last meeting and it sounded like you were going to have difficulty <laughs> meeting quorum. <I'm> so <laughs> glad I could for many reasons. We're glad to have you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, and thank you, uh, Commissioner Jordanic, for calling attention to uh, the report. Um, I do see that David Jefferson is uh, raising his hand. So. Perhaps we can take public comment and he can provide us an update on that. I will. You're unmuted, Dr. Jefferson. 
Uh, thank you very much. Um, you'll recall what we're talking about is the report by Alex Halderman that is a declaration in a federal lawsuit in Georgia, uh, Erling v. Raffensperger. Uh, Professor Haldeman is a computer scientist and he has studied the Dominion voting system, uh, Dominion image, image cast voting system used in Georgia and also in San Francisco. Uh, and has uh, and he did so at the direction of the court and found severe vulnerabilities uh, in that voting system. And I had asked uh, the Elections Commission um, to uh, to call for uh, a copy of that report so that you could um, you you could examine it to see if it applied to to San Francisco, and uh, you uh, had um, President Bernholtz write a letter to the Secretary of State asking asking her to sort of take over this issue because it's more of a state level issue. So I, I first I want to thank uh, the Commission and President Bernholtz for for writing that letter to the Secretary of State uh, to Weber. Uh, asking her to investigate this report and and perhaps to intervene uh, with the court to ask for a copy of that Haldeman report. Uh, I hope if you get a reply and if you think it's appropriate that you either make the reply public or at least let me know uh, about it because um, I'm anxious to know whether the Secretary of State uh, is is going to uh, act on uh, your request. I just want to give you some updates, some news about what has happened since we last met. Um, I believe I reported to you that uh, um, I, I know I reported to you that the state of Louisiana had uh, filed an intervention with the court asking for a copy of the Halderman report because they use Dominion image image cast machines and the judge denied that request. Uh, I believe I also told you that Fox News uh, had asked for a copy of this report. Uh, the judge hasn't ruled on that yet, but what I have learned is that they were not requesting just so they could uh, make a news story out of it. They were requesting it as evidence to be used in the lawsuit, the, the multi-billion dollar lawsuit filed by Dominion against Fox, Fox News for defamation. So if the judge granted them access to the Halderman report, it would be for attorney's eyes only. It would not be made public. But as I said, the judge has not ruled on that request from Fox News. Um, somewhat uh, surprisingly, Georgia Secretary of State Raffensperger, who is the target of the lawsuit, um, asked the judge uh, and also made a public statement calling for the Haldeman report to be made public. So now, somewhat surprisingly, both the plaintiffs and the state of Georgia are in agreement on this report that they would like it, or at least the redacted version of it to be made public. Uh, still, the judge has not done that. Presumably the reason the state would like the report to be made public is that it, uh, it's come to the attention of uh, the press and, and the public, the, the existence of the report. And so um, uh, Secretary of State Raffensperger in Georgia would like to be able to demonstrate just how far off base the criticism that Professor Halderman is making uh, is, and he can't really do that if the report is is secret. That's that's my guess as to the reasoning. I don't think he actually said why, although he did claim the report was quote off base. And the last uh, update I want to mention is that uh, the federal agency CISA, the Cybersecurity and Information Security Agency of the Department of Homeland Security expressed interest in seeing the Halderman report. So the judge gave Professor Halderman permission to send a copy uh, to them, which he did. CISA subsequently last week wrote to Judge Totenberg uh, recommending that Halderman's report not be made public, even in redacted form, uh, until CISA has a chance to review it and then work with the vendor to come up with appropriate mitigations and get them tested and presumably certified and fielded. Now, um, CISA didn't say how long that would take, but they did say that they would have a better idea in about 30 days or so after they've done some technical evaluation of the Haldeman report. Uh, the judge has not uh, ruled on or accepted um, CISA's recommendation, but assuming that the judge does that, um, this means that the there could be a, 
an exceedingly long delay, presumably, um, in either the main or redacted version of that report becoming public, uh, which circles around to the original request I made of this Elections Commission that it asked for the, the report to be made public. So anyway, that's just uh, an update on um, the action of that uh, about that report. And again, I want to thank the commission and and uh, the president for sending the letter that you sent to the Secretary of State of California. Thank you, Dr. Jefferson. Uh, Martha, can you uh, on the next call? Mr. Turner is next. Mr. Turner, you're unmuted. Yes, uh, thank you, commissioners. I, I just wanted to comment on a, on a couple things on this issue. Um, certainly, the uh, community appreciates the efforts of, of Mr. Halderman, uh, but I think it, it deserves stating that uh, there's really no breaking news here. Um, he may have found issues attached to one particular model of voting machine that might be some new model of dominion systems but the fact is just so we're we're clear all the systems that are currently in use except for the open source systems in, that are being utilized in mississippi are similarly deficient the deficiency starts with the certification process um, being broken uh, and that is per the father of the certification process, Roy Saltman. So it, I think it behooves us to start at the certification process and understand that NASED and the folks that have been giving stamps of approval on these systems, along with the ITLs, the independent testing labs, um, there is a certain deficiency that is in existence at the processes inception, right, right at the certification point. So a lot of this conversation is again, 20 years old, and we're talking about now proving up Halderman and his assessment of the system. But we know that these systems are not appropriate as sort of a blanket stipulation, regardless of the model type. The problem is, of course, that they're running on proprietary software that you can't see. And so you're faith-based at that moment. And of course, that's the beauty of the open source system. So I don't think we should get completely into the weeds. We just need to understand that we are operating in a vacuum here that's 20 years old and that the real conversation has to be how quickly we can move the new systems forward. We don't need to have conversation too much about the difference between the two systems, we have to take the current systems and throw them in the dumpster and then bring the new systems that we're lucky to have available and bring them in as quickly as possible. All the rest of the conversation should just be pointed at the, the new systems and implementing and doing all that tough work. The old systems are obviously have left us in a very dire situation that is further exacerbated by the fact we don't really want to talk publicly about how dire the situation is because that further erodes public confidence. So that's why you get groups like the Little Hoover Commission couching it in terms like, let's make a good system better because we don't want to tell all the voters that the current systems are at a level two out of a one to 10 because you know that will lessen voter confidence. Yes, the new systems will come in at perhaps an eight, and that's better than a two, but we, we really, I think, should move past that part of the conversation where we're talking or trying to analyze the current systems. Let's just stipulate, get them out of existence as quickly as possible. I think the damage they've done to the United States is self-evident, and again, uh, the last part, I just wanted to comment the audacity of the vendors rep rep Steve Bennett to make the comments that the people of San Francisco don't care about elections and that this elections commission doesn't know anything about elections. I think that Mr. Turner, 
Yeah. I'm so sorry. We're we're past the four minutes. Thank sorry. You. Thank you, Martha. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We have one more caller. Caller, you are unmuted. You have three minutes to comment. Thank you. Good afternoon again. This is Jim Soper from the National Voting Rights Task Force. I want to connect two things here. One is this Haldeman report about Dominion that is not being released. Uh, I do know Professor Haldeman, he's serious and he's dedicated and meticulous. And I take any indication that there's things that are not good uh, very seriously. And the public needs to know what's going on. And this connects into open source. Most of the conversation about open source is about getting a look at the source code, which is a good idea since we know in the past that somebody with 23 convictions for embezzlement program, the Debo machines, but it goes beyond that. We need access to just about everything that's going on inside those machines. The, the log files, the databases, everything, including the source code or in there, everything. We don't want to uh, give people hints as to how to hack the machine, but there's a lot that can be shown to the public that's not there. And both of these issues, the Haldeman report, the Dominion system, and open source, they're all tied together. And we will continue to support open source and encourage the secretary to uh, approve the pilot project for next November. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sober. Martha, do we have any other callers? No, that was that was the last one. Okay, great. Thank you to the members of the public for your participation and your comments. Uh, any further discussion amongst the commission? Okay. Great. And we'll move on to the next agenda point. Uh, item 8, the director's report discussion and possible action on director's report. Uh, director Arntz. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Chappell. So I'll take any questions on the report, but then also one attachment to the, is the uh, racial equity progress report is a section that the commission needs to complete. It's an A section A7. So that's why it's attached. And I thought I attached also the uh, election plan for the potential April election, but I didn't. Uh, so we we have it drafted and I'll send it out after speaking to Martha. She can send it out to the commissioners. So we'll have to uh, review the election plan for the potential April election at the commission's uh, March meeting. I can say that there's not a, there's there's nothing that's been removed from the elections process uh, from the February the current election tomorrow in relation to the April election. We're not taking away any services, so uh, we're actually adding more services for April. So I I, so I apologize for for the omission. I thought I sent everything, uh, but I didn't. But I can take any questions on the on the director's report. No questions. Okay. You uh, <laughs> were speechless. That's oh, very good. <laughs> but I do want to thank uh, Commissioner uh, Mogi for her time on the commission. It's been a real treat to have you a part of this collections commission. Uh, certainly one of, uh, certainly, a, a, I think, a, a great participant in the elections commission process and the elections process. And uh, certainly sorry to see you go, wish you could stick around longer. But certainly I want to just say that everything that you've contributed to this point certainly is, is going to mark down here at the department. So we thank you for your time and wish you good luck and everything going forward. So. Thank you. Well, I'll still be doing my delivery drop off tomorrow. So I'll <laughs> see you tomorrow. All right, very good. Uh, and good luck tomorrow. I'm, Thank you. yeah, I know it will it'll go really smooth and I've already heard great things and thanks again for another great report. Yeah, we are definitely speechless. It's always right. like you run things so smoothly for us. So uh, thank you for always making it so easy, not just for us, but for the public and really mm -hmm. appreciate everything. Well, so thank, thank you. you. 
And I mean, I've got to say, I've got a, there's a great team of people down here in the department though, too. So it's certainly not me doing it. Um, thank you. Great. Uh, any public, oh, Commissioner Giordani. So this, um, the racial um, equity progress report, there's, if there's an action item for us, is that something that we would agendize for a future meeting or um, was that meant for us to do today? I guess a, I guess a good question. Is there anything that we need any action that you need from us on that director Arns? Is that something that we have to. We have to, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, no, so okay. yeah, we have to include that in our report uh, to the Ra department of racial equity. So. Yeah, I think we do need something. From you, I don't know how you're going to, I don't know. I don't know. Your pro I guess you have to agendize it and go through that process, but we just need a product from the commission. Okay. Is there a deadline on that? Uh, March 1st, <laughs> oh. Oh, so, okay. uh, yeah. Uh, so I don't know, um, maybe city attorney. Or... Can I make a suggestion? Um, is that when I did it last time I wrote in. Like the report, and then I did print it to. The commission, but it seems like we're kind of off the timing. Um, so that's where I wouldn't kind of need DCA Flores to, to advise us or if we're allowed to make that recommendation to the president to actually just thought, like, you know, at least make the initial report to meet the deadline. Um, because I just remember I did the first initial recommendations um, and then submitted it. I don't know. If, I think we had a little bit of time. Um, so we were able to get the commission to approve it, but I remember drafting the recommendation piece. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, I was gonna, there. I was gonna recommend that we delegate it to uh, President Bernholtz to complete. Otherwise, I don't see how the deadline is going to be made. Are we allowed? I guess that was our question. My question is: Are we allowed to do it without the full commission's approval to submit the progress report? Uh, do you just a point of clarification? This is my first uh, go around with um, racial equity uh, plans and progress reports. Um, do you remember if the commission made a decision um, at the last time um, this was submitted? So we had a couple of recommendations. I think that, you know, in terms of from a racial equity perspective, uh, you know, um, making sure that we diversify our our board and commission, um, and it was very broadly speaking. And I know, and then um, the other one was to make sure that we do um, do a land acknowledgement. But I know that's been more Commissioner Bernholtz and Commissioner Jung did um, were actually speaking with you know to see if we if the land acknowledgement was the accurate like way of doing the land acknowledgement. I know there's been a couple conversations, so I feel like. There, those were the recommendations that were made, and then we basically assigned others. And I think because it was my transition from president onward, I think Commissioner Bernholtz has been the one that's been taking it on. So it's unfortunate we're kind of balling telling her right now what she's supposed to do when she's not here. But like, I do, I don't know, maybe I'm saying this out of like context, but I do think that she was the one that was supposed to take it on because I took it on when I was president to do the actual recommendation. So um, I don't know if other folks remember the conversation. I guess it wouldn't be mostly Commissioner Jordanic if you do recall, but um, I feel like the president was supposed to just kind of continue to monitor and yes, track if I wasn't wrong. If I'm not wrong, I mean. Yeah, so um, I mean, that being said, and because it's just a progress report um, that we um, have to report to the Office um, of Racial Equity, I, I would, I don't think that it is outside of President Bernholz's duties to to do that um, task, um, unless anyone on the commission feels otherwise. Um, you know, it, it sounds like that was the course in the previous uh, reports and I know that you know this has only been probably what like two years since this legislation was enacted so we don't have a lot of history on it but if that was the way that um it was done in the past then there's you know there would be no issue with continuing 
to just allow the president um, the discretion to do it. Yeah, so, yeah, sorry. I just I just want to one thing I want to add is that, yeah, I do think that the we did even try to attend meetings to understand what our role is. We have very little even, you know, jurisdiction over like whether it is have, you know, we could encourage our um, appointed bodies to think about diversity and whatnot. But like we, we, it was like, it's just, it, this, this, the work that the department has to do versus like the role of the commission has always been a little bit kind of tough because we really have very little control over, because um, we're not going to mandate the operational side that's on the department and we'll, we'll just review any progress reports. And then from the commission side, we actually have very little that we could do. So we can always just encourage it. And I think that's what we decided to do was, you know, um, see what maybe other commissions are doing and seeing if that's something that we would want to adopt. But outside of that, I think it's very minimal. So if commissioner, I mean, if president Bernholtz can update it in that way, I would recommend that to be the process. And I think I just submitted it directly to director Arns of our edits and he just combined it with his report. So from a process perspective. Got it. And I assume that there's easy access to the report that you did at the start, at last year so that Lucy, uh, President Bernholtz can kind of leverage that. Okay. So it, if we're say, uh, DCA Flores, if we're saying that that's kind of within the scoop, uh, scope of the president's role, I think that means we don't have to take a specific action on this. Is that right? No, I mean, unless the um, director wants to present um, the progress report um, and just discuss what's in the report just so that it could be um, heard in a public meeting. I mean, I know that he submitted the report um, as a document, but I don't know for Lucy's context um, if we wanted to discuss it at all. It's up to you all. I think I think the report that was submitted is just the blank form to be completed. So I don't think there's some, anything substantive for us to discuss. So I think, yeah, so I, I think that, um, you know, it's it's hard to, you know, uh, President Bernholz isn't present, um, so it it's tough to say do this, but you know, that's within her um, responsibilities or within. Therefore, it's not tough. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I, I don't think it would be inappropriate to just proceed with, um, you know, we'll ask Pre uh, President Bernholz to take care of this um, item. Okay, and and I will support her as needed since I'm on this meeting, and who knows, uh, kind of what her her schedule will be. So. Can I, um, is it possible, Director Arns, for um, at least the commission to see your progress report? Because I'm looking at the attachment and it's just a blank document is what I'm looking at right now. Yeah, ours isn't done yet either, but certainly we can send it to the commission. Yeah, I think it's it's just always helpful so that there's like at least continuity and if we do need any alignment. Um, so I think Commissioner Bernholtz can see what kind of progress has been done on the department side as well. That sounds good. Okay. Uh, any other comments on the director's report um, or a racial equity progress report? Okay. And I believe no public comment. So we can then move on to the next agenda, agenda item. Number nine, discussion and possible action regarding items for future agendas. Uh, I have I have three of them. I think the Dominion contract renewal will be agendized as an item. We have revisiting the meeting minutes for January 2022 and uh, November 20th, 2019. And then we have the election plan for the April election that will be submitted uh, prior to that meeting. Anything else? Okay. 
Commissioner Giordani. Maybe this could just be under the director's report, but maybe the um, the racial equity progress report that was submitted could be just attached so the public can see that as well as what we we submitted. Got it. Okay, thanks. Okay, any public comment? I don't see any hands raised. No. Okay. Then uh, thank you everyone for your patience. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Mogi again. Welcome, Commissioner Dye. Uh, we'll see you next month. Uh, this meeting is adjourned at 5:41 p.m. Bye. Thank you. Bye. That's nice working with you. Bye, Commissioner <laughs> Dye. <laughs> bye, everyone. Bye. Okay. Bye. <laughs>